us and I'll give them a couple minutes to come in. All right, so um, I'm just gonna start us off and as students come in, that's fine. They can just join in whenever. So I just wanted to say thank you guys for um, everyone who's here and thank you for attending the, I would say pre-health conference. Um, my name is Zaina and I'm one of the PTOT outreach chairs. Um, if you're here right now, that means you're in the physical therapy um, anatomy of an applicant a panel and if this isn't the zoom that you're looking for you can go back to our website and we'll have the appropriate zoom links there so for today this is how we're gonna run i'm going to introduce our professionals first and um then we're gonna go through our questions and there's also a live q a where you guys can put in your questions and we're gonna we i'm gonna go through kind of back and forth through the ones you've sent us and through the live Q&A. All right, so first we have- um, So to start us off, um, I'm gonna have each panelist introduce themselves. So to start us off, we have um, Jennifer Brown. Hi, I'm Jennifer Brown. Um, I am the Director of Student Recruitment for the Program in Physical Therapy at Washington University. Um, and then next we have uh, Sadie Wunderlich. Hi everyone, my name is Sadie Wunderlich. I am a recruitment and admission specialist from Des Moines University. Uh, and pleased to be with you here today. All right, and then next we have um, Lauren Huguenin. I'm sorry, I don't know if I you said that. You did it, you were great. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Huguenin. I'm a admissions advisor with the CUPT program and very happy to be here today. Um, next we have uh, Jillian Gaelic. Hi everyone, I'm Jillian. I am an admissions counselor for Midwestern University. I work with all of the programs, but I specifically also help out with the physical therapy program. Okay, um, next we have Dr. Marcy Becker. Hello. Um, as she said, I'm Dr. Becker. I am a clinical assistant professor at the University of Iowa, and I welcome, I'm with the students that first summer that they're here and um, a part of the admissions process. All right, thank you. And then next we have Molly Rose. Hi everyone, I represent the University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, currently under a couple feet of snow, but I'm lucky to be in sunny Columbia. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm not a PT, but I can help you with uh, how to get into PT school and specifically UIC. All right, thank you. And then next we have uh, Daniel Dinkins. Hey everyone, I'm Daniel. I'm assistant director of admissions at Northwestern University's Department of Physical Therapy. Uh, just like Molly, I'm located in downtown, uh, in Chicago as well. All right, and then next we have um, Jeff Tolley. Hi guys, hopefully you can hear me all right. Um, Wi-Fi is the battle of the year. Um, but yeah, I am a student recruitment manager at Rocky Mountain University in Utah. 
Um, so we're at the base of the Rocky Mountains. And yeah, I also work with our physical therapy program. So. All right. And then last, we have uh, Jenna LaRue. Hi, I'm from Ohio University um, in Appalachia. And I am the first year admissions GA. So I can give you a little bit more of the student's perspective on applications. All right, so again, I just wanna thank everyone for being here and then uh, to remind the students that you can put your live questions in the Q&A. And then uh, to start us off, so our first question is, um, we'll start off with a hard one. <laughs> How will uh, some of your applications and the acceptances um, change due to the COVID situation? I can go first, just speaking about Washington University, <laughs> we really understand that getting those um, shadowing, clinical shadowing experiences are really, really difficult. So we're taking into consideration um, that and we do not have a minimum hour requirement on our application in general. So we're really just, if people don't have any hours, we're taking that into consideration. It won't affect your application with us at all. Yeah, I'll kind of echo. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say to echo that, I, I would say probably all programs are making adjustments. And the PT CAS application itself has a, a question in there to ask you how has COVID affected you personally, academically, professionally. And so, um, we are, we totally understand. We, we are very flexible. We accept telehealth hours as well, um, but fill out that PTCAST question about how COVID has impacted you, um, if it's pertinent. Yeah, I assume we're, we're probably all going to be along the same lines with that. Um, we're using the shadowing opportunity to solidify that this is a path you for sure want to take. It's more for you than for us. Um, but yeah, we're being understanding with the amount that you can get. And also that goes with letters of recommendation. I know we, and along with maybe some other schools here, prefer that you have a physical therapist or two as letters of recommendation, but we also understand that those can be difficult to get as well. So we're just kind of being lenient with as much as we can in those areas. Um, so hopefully you guys can get them. If not, then we'll, we'll kind of consider other letters of recommendation and, and fewer hours. I agree. And I think a lot of students are, you know, faced with this issue right now and schools understand that completely because a lot of, uh, clinics don't want shadows in there because, you know, they only can have their students in there or even only their own staff. Um, so what I always suggest to students is if you can reach out to physical therapists um, to maybe set up a meeting with them, like a Zoom meeting or anything like that, just to kind of get an idea of what the, um, the profession is like and include that in your application and try to put as much on your application as you can in terms of what you know about the role of a physical therapist. Yeah, if I could just add. Go ahead, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Sadie. Oh, thank you. If I could add on just one additional piece, I agree with everything my colleagues have said regarding shadowing hours and letters of reference. DMU specifically has a requirement for prerequisite coursework to earn a letter grade and some institutions when they moved abruptly to virtual learning in the spring of 2020, apply to pass fail and we are willing to work with individuals on a case by case basis if that has affected you. So just let us know and we can let you know what additional steps might need to be taken if we will accept that pass fail coursework towards a prerequisite, um, you know, what that looks like. So as my colleagues have all said, we understand it's been a really difficult past 12 months. And for you as undergraduate students looking ahead to professional schools, um, we understand the challenges that you've been facing. And we want to make sure that this process isn't something that becomes an additional challenge for you to overcome. We are wanting to work with you and understand those circumstances. So utilize those features on PTCAS to let us know what your circumstances have been like, but also don't be afraid to reach out individually and share with us kind of what those points of concern are for you so we can address those. Yep. That's exactly what I was going to say. We're definitely looking and accepting pass-fail courses. Um, We're also ensuring that you can um, 
we will take any sort of like your online classes, even if labs or something have to, had to be adapted online, those are accepted as well. Just one addition. Xenia, you should make. check the chat. Okay. Um, just one additional point that I would like to make is that remember that even, you know, you can submit your application July 1 and, but you have, but you have that whole fall to continue to explore the profession and bring that up if an interview comes. And so, like Jeff was saying, one of the biggest points and the reasons that, that, you know, you're encouraged to get observation hours is to ensure that this is the right career for you. And so I want to hear also did you think about pharmacy and why did you exclude that? Did you think about medicine and why did you exclude that? Did you think about accounting and you were like, no, God, don't put me there. You know, so I think also can continue to learn about yourself and be able to describe that in your application, but then also into your interview. So I don't want, I, and that'll just allow you to walk into PT school more confidently. And also don't feel like, okay, well, I can't get any. So does two matter? Two in peds matters, you know, two in geriatrics matters because the, the more that you explore the different avenues, the, the more you can speak about it, the more it comes out in your application and in your interview process. And so I encourage you not to give up and um, to continue to make those contacts, just like everybody said, but this, that observation hour process is really for you for, so that you, when you're applying, you're hundred percent confident, this is what I wanna do. So take that approach as you plan your summer and as you think about next year, um, even after you submit your application. All right, thank you guys. Um, and then again, another question that kind of talks about the application was which part of the application do you hold the most importance in like determining the a person's acceptance, like GPA, volunteer hours, Jerry scores, etc. I'll go first. Um, so Western U, hi, I'm Giselle. I'm a representative for Western U, um, liaison to the College of Health Sciences. Um, we do not require the GRE and it may be completely different from other PT schools, but I just wanted to let everybody know and share that information. Um, we will be requiring the CASPER assessment test. It's a situational judgmental test. And um, the admissions committee decided that they would like to um, review the applicant as a whole and have a holistic review. So that is going to be something um, pretty different in what sets us apart from other programs. For so WashU, um, oh, sorry, I, go ahead. <laughs> I'll be fast. Um, for WashU, um, we really look at the entire application as a whole. Um, we've had a holistic review process for a while now, and um, we understand that there may be a bad semester. Um, you know, it takes you a second to figure out that you are interested in health sciences and physical therapy, and maybe you are a business major and accounting classes were insane for you. So we really look at the entire application um, and your letters of recommendation are important for us. We wanna understand um, your, your, why you're interested in physical therapy, what your motivation is. And then again, we've also dropped the GRE. Um, we don't find that it helps um, predict success in graduate school. So it's no longer a requirement for WashU. So we also have a holistic review process and it's been in place now for about five years. And each year we evaluate all of our requirements to see what we might want to change. And the GRE is the one that we're actually planning on discussing in March. So we do require it at this point, but I'm encouraging prospective students to always look on our website. That is the best place to find the most accurate information. And as far as what components are most important to us, as a reviewer, I would say that the essays are the most important because they give that insight. And an essay that has a lot of self-reflection, multiple in-depth examples and answering questions like why you want to be a PT and what attributes you possess that would help you as a PT, those are really the types of 
uh, aspects that would speak to me as a reviewer. So I really want to know why a student is pursuing PT and why they think they would be an effective PT once they're practicing. So the essays are really huge in our process. Um, Midwestern University, we also take a holistic approach, just like I'm sure a lot of programs do. Um, we're going to look at everything. We're going to look at your GPA. We do require the GRE. Again, could be something that is discussed later on. Um, we're also looking at your physical therapy experience. And like we mentioned earlier, we do take into consideration any COVID experiences uh, that you might have. We're also looking at your volunteer work, your community service, because that is huge. We want well-rounded applicants. Um, so we feel like a lot of our students get really involved on campus so and it's because they were very involved in their undergrad as well um, so we want to see those types of things i always say put more than not enough on your application we really want to know you we want to get to see you as a whole not just just physical therapy um, and i would also mention too um, like uh, Lauren said, and I believe um, uh, Jennifer also said, checking the website is always a big thing too, um, because things can change. And so that's going to be your best bet, or even giving us a call in the office or sending us an email to see what's going on. For example, our prerequisite courses have changed a little bit. We are only requiring six English, where it might say nine right now, and that will be changing soon. So that's also something to think about as well. I think we match up pretty closely with Midwestern, like Jillian was saying. Um, we do f like to see kind of that volunteer service aspect just because it's a big part of our community here. Um, I would say since we are an accelerated program, meaning that we're a semester shorter than most other programs, we do kind of emphasize a little bit more on the academic side, just because we want to set you up for success. We don't want you uh, floundering, you know, if you can't handle it. I mean, it essentially what we look for, the most important thing is kind of that progress. Like Jennifer was saying, we understand there might have been a semester or two in your past that maybe was a struggle. We all were freshmen at one point. Um, but uh, it's really just kind of how have, are you currently, uh, you know, what is the last progress of your, of your academic career? Um, that and then the letters of recommendations as well do speak uh, volumes for us, you know, so I would say in general, slight edge towards the academic portion, but in, overall, it's that holistic approach and the interview is really what sells us, we get to see your passion for physical therapy and, and that can decide a lot for us. At Ohio University, we have, again, a holistic review, um, but it is important to have a good GPA, of course, because that's kind of the baseline to like really get you in the door. And then we also from there, we'll look at GRE scores, job shadowing, letters recommendation. Those are really great and important essays because those things let us know who you are as a person, not just a bunch of numbers. Um, and then from from there, again, once you get to the point that you can have an interview, that's really where it's make or break. And because you, you want to see the people uh, behind the application. I want to add for Northwestern University, we're pretty flexible when it comes to the volunteering, just because um, we understand that especially students from underrepresented backgrounds have a harder time, have a harder time uh, with volunteer hours and so for that reason anything that you do in your off time whether it's paid or not we don't care um you know a lot of people have to work for pay and they don't have the time to you know work for free um so i, I do want to add that as well i would say that we put more focus on your academic performance um and a lot of people, all of us are saying a lot of the similar things I, I, and everybody's nodding their head, but I, I will say one thing that has stuck out to me that I want everybody to know with their GPA is that two people could have like a 3.3 GPA, but your stories of how you got there are completely different. Some people might have started off with like a 2.5 and you worked your way, you retook some prerequisite courses that is very different from a student who was was the opposite, who started off maybe with the 3.8 and you slacked off and you know things like that. So 
we look at GPA, but we look at the whole story, the, the trends and whether you took, retook courses, things like that. Build off of what Daniel said, because I was, I was shaking my head very largely <laughs> during that. Um, um, there is a question um, on the on PT Cast that asks, you know, is there anything you would like to explain in your application? And so that's a great point. That if you sometimes we see that there are student athletes and maybe their GPA or you know during their active season is a little bit lower, or maybe as they were adjusting their freshman sophomore year to that whole schedule, you know, that was hard. But sometimes we don't know if somebody was holding down a thirty hour a week job while they were in school, and so make that point in your application or you know if there was a life event or a health event we don't want you to share information you're not comfortable but if you feel like there was a semester or a year where you were not your best self and where you you had these you were de dealing with other stresses at the time you know take the opportunity to write what you are comfortable disclosing um, in that question and last comment off of that too is um not only do we look at the number, but the, the, the level of coursework that you took. And this builds right on what Daniel was saying. A 3.3 can look like this from on one application. It can mean something different on another application. You know, depending on what level of courses that was taken, the rigor of the course that was taken, the amount of semester hours in a semester, you know, that can influence things as well. So, um, so sometimes we have students that, you know, take some AP work in high school and then they jump in at a little bit of a higher level, you know, and they're worried about how that GPA will look um, on a graduate application. So we, we do look at those details and you're credited, if you will, you know, for those, for those details, those life, real life situations, so. All right, thank I you would... guys. Oh, sorry. That's, I'm sorry. No, you continue. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, I think um, UIC is, is uh, very, very transparent in how we admit students. And it's uh, primarily the, the sort of like the first phase is, is your grades and scores, um, particularly anatomy and physiology. We want to know that you're going to be able to handle the curriculum, like Jeff was saying, uh, and we want you to succeed in the program. So, so that's kind of the first step is your grades and your scores. And then the second step is the interview and all of the other things. Um, we even look at things like, you know, did you take a heavy course load and work or and be an athlete or and volunteer because a PT's life is very busy and they have to juggle so many different things. Um, so we can see that reflected in your application. And yeah, that's just one of the things we look at. All right, so thank you guys. And then on to our next question we have is what makes, what's the most important thing you look for in an applicant? I can go first. Um, for Des Moines University, uh, and this kind of echoes off of what Molly was saying for um, their candidates, we too are looking for candidates that are academically qualified. We publish our class profile on our website, and that can give you some guidance into what our admission committee is seeking in terms of a competitive applicant um, regarding your academic metrics. Beyond that, we are looking for candidates who have a strong demonstrated interest in the profession and that can be through shadowing through learning about the profession through educational opportunities and um, through excluding other opportunities in healthcare or other professions as well some of those concepts we've already talked about we're looking for candidates who have a um, demonstrated uh, service and leadership through their other experiences too. So as you're considering um, if you're early in your undergraduate career and considering what types of 
things you could be investing your time and energy towards. If you are able to move towards a leadership position in a student club or take on a, a leadership role in student athletics or at your place of employment, those are things that we look for that our admission committee feels are competitive. And then regarding service, whether that's something local in your community, um, participation in a volunteer event or a service trip, there's multiple different avenues that you can begin to demonstrate those types of qualities. But we want to see that threaded throughout your application in your experiences, your letters of reference potentially could also echo that, and then in your essay questions as well. I would just like to add um, critical thinking ability. I, that's something we haven't talked about. And I would say number one, as Sadie said, make sure you wanna be a PT and you know what a PT is because what breaks my heart the most is if we have a student that decides, you know, three months in or six months in, you know, this isn't the place for me. This isn't the profession for me because that means, you know, somebody else didn't get into a program and there was a spot for them. So. I, we really want to know that that you you're confident and you really want to be a PT. And then secondly is critical thinking ability because that's the skill that's going to serve you throughout this from the day you graduate till the day you retire in this profession. So um, ability to problem solve, ability to think on your feet, ability to take in and want to learn new information, um, a yearn for learning, those those skill sets. In addition, uh, how, how well do you communicate? This is a very people-oriented profession and, and you have to be able to relate to all kinds of people. And so however you can demonstrate that in your application through your letters of reference or um, in, in the roles that you've served, maybe you're a, a TA or a research assistant. Um, so communication is a, a very big part. But really, as a PT, you're working with people all the time. There, almost every skill you have will be pertinent <laughs> in your application. So um, talk about all of them. At Ohio University, we have, um, of course, we're really interested in the fact that you want to be a PT, that um, whether that be through your coursework, through shadowing, through other opportunities that you've taken on. Um, but we're also looking at resiliency um, because this, it is hard. It's a difficult program no matter where you go. And so a new measure that we've taken on is looking at people's ability to uh, cope with challenges and uh, stress management as well. Kind of piggybacking off what Molly said, um, we know that um, there's a reason we interview that most programs interview, right? Because they want to see, you know, you could be amazing on, on paper, on PT cast, but we want to get to know you as well. Um, so if you think that you are someone who struggles with interviews, taking classes to work on interview skills is always something that I always encourage even before you start interviews or before you start uh, thinking about graduate school. Um, well, obviously you guys are thinking about graduate school, but um, it's just something that you you know, you could work on somebody, they say, oh, your eye contact is not that great, or you're talking too much with your hands. I know I do that too much. Um, so we, when we interview, we want to get to know you on a personal level. We understand nerves can come into it, but that's what we, why most programs interview is to kind of get to know you and to see how you are in person as well as on paper. All right, so um, I can move on to the um, next question. So um, our next question is, does your school offer any financial aid opportunities to students? Um, and how many students enrolled do you believe, like in the program, do you believe receive financial aid? Say that at Ohio University, offer um, several opportunities. I myself am a GA and that is one of them. So we per class have about five full-time and five part-time GAs. So a GA position will cover um, part or full tuition and then you get a stipend along with that as well. 
And for the second and third years, we offer scholarships. So by the end of our program, about 50% of the students end up with some form of financial assistance throughout the program. We have a number of um, yearly scholarships based on merit or um, based on essays that we give out. Um, I believe each year we give about $600,000 in scholarships um, and that's across all three years. Um, and typically we just ran the numbers recently. Typically um, students, about half of our graduating class has received some sort of um, financial aid through the program. That doesn't go along with outside um, loans or anything, we don't track that. Um, that's just within the university. I'm gonna be honest, we don't have a lot of scholarship opportunities from our from our department. Um, we, we do have some scholarships that are listed on our website, some you know institutional scholarships from us. Um, and then I've also done just outside research to add like other outside scholarships to our website that you can apply for. Um, I do know that the largest scholarship that you can get is a $10,000 scholarship like per year towards the full tuition. So um, I would just say go in knowing that, you know, you, you will have to apply for other scholarships outside, you know, if you want to really um, reduce the amount coming out of the pocket. As a public university, the University of Illinois at Chicago, UIC, um, also doesn't really offer much in the way of scholarships, but our tuition is among the best values of DPT programs every year. So um, it's still really a, a great value. Um, and I would say a large amount of our students are getting loans or funding from outside sources. Uh, you can work while you're in the program, but Certainly you can't expect to work full time to pay for the program while you're in it. It's, it's an investment in itself, uh, in yourself actually. <laughs> so, yeah. And when we do also offer scholarships once you're an admitted student and they are awarded based on merit and need. Um, I'll add on Molly because we it's a similar thing with us. There's some scholarships you're eligible for once you're admitted. And I will say, I know we're all going to break out into our own rooms here, like in, in half an hour. And so we're going to share more about our own programs. But um, I'm going to be sending out the contact information for our financial aid director because she's a star. Like she really helps with budgeting, all that kind of stuff too. And I, I will want to highlight um, although there's not as much funding from us, um, our the value is really is is really good. Um, Northwestern is ranked number four um, best PT school in the country currently by um, U.S. News and World Report. And so we're really excited about the value um, that that you know the that our education could bring. One perk with University of Colorado for out-of-state students is that they are typically able to establish residency by the second year. So it's a huge savings. It's about double per credit hour for out-of-state. So them being able to pay in-state for the remainder of the program helps substantially. We do offer a number of scholarships, both based on merit and need as well. Um, and then most of our students, I would say probably at least 95% of them use FAFSA to some uh, degree. So, um, but yep, that's for what we've got for CU. I'm gonna say something very similar to Daniel. We, at Midwestern University, we don't have a ton of scholarships available. Um, there are some that you can apply for through our website. And it is mostly once you're in the program, they are merit-based and you can also take into consideration. I know that um, IPTA, APTA will give out scholarships as well. Um, so some of our second years or third years are eligible for those. And then uh, like Lauren said, a lot of our students will use, utilize FAFSA as well as student loans. 
And we also have federal work study. Um, I know it's not as great as graduate assistant, um, but some students will do that if they can't work at Starbucks six to two, because it obviously work, does not work with your school schedule. Um, so they'll work in like our office or at the rec center um, and earn like $13 an hour. So it's still something. Yeah, we are. Oh, go ahead, Dr. Becker. Oh, that's that's okay. Um, I'll, I'll take, give the baton to you in just a second. Um, this is something that we've worked really hard at. Um, Dr. Shields, our director, has published a couple papers just even proposing and bringing up this topic of looking at the amount of debt that PT students are graduating with. So um, it's on our mind and it's constantly talked about in all of our meetings. In the last two years, we've worked to give 100% of our students some either some scholarship or financial aid. And that's in addition to work study opportunities that are available. Um, and we're working to increase that all the time. And just in terms of numbers for a public university, obviously if you're an in-state student that is cheaper, but we're also working for those out-of-state students um, um, to, to, to give as much financial aid as possible. And um, we are up there in the top five in terms of best value in the country and then also best ranked program in the country as well. Um, I was just going to reiterate some of the information you've already heard. FAFSA, um, about 10% of our incoming students will receive a scholarship. We have scholarship funds from some uh, several different buckets, and so those are awarded by the admission committee. Our incoming students are um, all in consideration for those scholarship dollars. And then as first year students, you are given access to a scholarship application through our financial aid office. From there, you can apply for those scholarships that are applicable to your second and or third year, depending on, you know, if they're renewable or um, if you apply for them as a second year returning as a third year student. There are um, work study opportunities. Uh, there are some tuition reimbursement programs available in the state of Iowa. And um, so those are always a good idea to look into if you plan to work in I think some of them require you to work a certain number of years in a rural environment and then the state of Iowa and your employer each will reimburse you for some of your tuition. So lots of different options. And certainly, um, as my colleagues have said, we're all very aware of the financial considerations that go towards professional school. And so we want to make sure you're receiving a really valuable education, um, something we share with our students and that I would encourage anyone considering graduate school to look into um, just as the not only the cost of the school, but also the cost of living in the area. And so we feel that where we're located, we have a really affordable cost of living and that can kind of offset some of those tuition costs as well if you're considering comparable programs. Yeah, the only thing I'll add since everything seems to be similar to what others were saying is, is yeah, we have awesome financial aid and scholarships advisors that you can connect with and they can give you everything that I can't tell you. Um, it's a whole new world. Um, but also that at Rocky Mountain University, we don't have in-state or out-of-state tuition, just kind of a standard rate for all of our students. And then um, as well as what City was saying, it is a relatively low cost of living here in Utah, so. Uh, to piggyback off of Jeff, we do not have in-state or out-of-state tuition. We're a private institution. Um, our Pomona campus in California does have scholarships. You would have to, you know, meet with financial aid. They'll give you the different scholarship opp opportunities. And then we do have some tuition reimbursement um, opportunities as well. Our new DPT program in Lebanon, Oregon on our Oregon campus does have a, an opportunity for a scholarship for our students. So that's awesome, um, but it is a brand new program. So um, hopefully we'll be um, gaining some more opportunities for those students. So definitely look at to financial aid and our financial aid would be happy to speak with you as a prospective student or an interviewed student as well, or an admitted student. All right, um, thank you guys. And it looks like we have um, a live question. Um, how many observation hours, if COVID wasn't a factor, would you say makes a person a strong applicant? If I can respond to that, uh, we actually typically recommend to students that quality over quantity is really what we go by. We're looking for reflection again in, our, in the essays, and that would reflect to us that an individual had a meaningful observation experience. So I would say that on average, our students probably, or well, our applicants who are admitted probably had anywhere from like 
It's hard to say, I would say from like 50 to 150, but again, there were so many other pieces that come into play. So um, I would certainly aim for a variety of settings that is certainly beneficial as a generalist education program. We, our students go on to work in any setting, work with any population and treat any condition. So having a variety of settings is certainly beneficial. I completely agree with Lauren. Um, we're looking uh, for quality over quantity. Um, like she mentioned, I would say on average for us about 50 to 100 hours is competitive. Um, but again, it's also going to reflect in how you grasp the material or not material, but you know, the profession because someone could have 200 hours and have no idea what a PT does and someone could have 40 and have a really good idea of what a PT does. Um, so it's also going to reflect in your the rest of your application. In a normal year, we require 40 hours in two different settings um, as the minimum. Generally, people get more than this and a greater variety of settings is always beneficial, at least about 10 to 15 hours per setting so you can get a deeper understanding of what they're doing in pediatrics, home health, etc. cetera. Um, but we also have students who come in after working as a physical therapy aide um, where they work in the clinic as cleaning and doing basic documentation, um, but it's a paid position. So that's really helpful. Um, pre-college to just save a little money and to get really deep experience in a single setting. But keep in mind that you might wanna explore other settings as well. Yes, I, I echo all of the comments, but keep in mind that the observation hours are really for your benefit to make sure that you know what you're getting into and you want to get into it. <laughs> and, um, I've heard of, of students in, in the DPT program, in their classes, and they're like, oh, I have this in my observations, so I already know, and they're helping the other students who didn't, didn't have those experiences. And um, it, it just, it's really for your own benefit. <laughs> I do want to add to with observation hours, keep in mind that for us, one of your letters of reference have to come from a licensed physical therapist who has supervised you during your observation hours. So that's another reason to take your observation hours seriously because that letter um, is going to be really critical. Like, for example, we had a student who had a stellar application. Everything was going so well. And then with their letter of reference, the their PT that uh, was supervising them said that they were unprofessional during supervising hours, like different things happen. And that was such a red flag. So I would say, don't think of observation hours as just something to check off. Like take, treat it seriously, treat it like a job, be on time, all of that. Daniel, you just brought up a great point that we haven't talked about today um, very explicitly, but is, is critical, I think, is when you're asking somebody to write a reference for you, ask specifically, would you be able to write me a strong reference? Like, ask that question, because if you're just saying, hey, would, hey, would you write me a reference, right? Like, you don't know what is going to be submitted about you, and so just as Daniel was saying, you know, build a relationship with the people. This is the faculty member that you perhaps write the reference, you know, maybe the personal reference, the PT reference. And this year, yes, there'll be a little bit more flexibility regarding that PT and, and um, reference letter, but whoever it is, you need to make sure that they would write you a strong reference, that they know who you are in terms of your best self. So ask that question. And if you don't know a faculty member really well now, this is the time, because I'm sure it's been hard this year to develop those relationships. Go to office hours, ask to meet via Zoom, you know, and if you're going to ask them, maybe it's like, I know, I, 
I've worked with you a little bit. This has been a really tough year. Could we just have a Zoom chat for 15 minutes, a couple weeks, you know, just so you get to know me a little bit in preparation for writing these letters. We're going to have, it, it's going to take creativity this year to develop those relationships, but I guarantee you it will, it will be time well vested because it will pay off in the letter that we receive. And I just wanted to add really quickly, when you asked for that letter of reference, since I know, sorry, I know we moved from um, observation hours to letter of reference, just, um, but I just want to quickly add, um, when you reach out to your recommender, shoot them a little, like send them a snapshot of yourself, like of uh, the things that you're interested in, because Sometimes the recommenders like, oh, wow, I didn't know that they were taking my class and working part time or they were president and of this sorority, things like that. So they don't know a lot about you and what you're doing outside of class. So send them a little blurb of you so that your recommendation could be even stronger. I just wanted to add our requirements are similar to uh, Daniel that Daniel had mentioned, um, you know, a supervising PT. And then the third one, um, I think the, to make your application a little bit stronger, it's either a college professor or a practicing licensed physical therapist. So um, definitely, I always emphasize on, you know, make sure you know who you're asking to write these letters of recommendation, because it can really, you know, um, make or break your application or just harm, be harmful to your application, or it could kind of put you over um, into, wow, this person, you know, I understand them more. Um, we want, we would like to offer you an interview. So definitely um, those requirements, you know, we do have understanding of we're in a pandemic and um, it's really hard to meet with a PT, but um, like um, Marcy said, meet over Zoom, you know, build that relationship and, and, and you get, be creative <laughs> in this environment. So I just wanted to um, share that. If, yeah, and I'll add, if students ask me all the time, or applicants ask me all the time, if I had 1500 hours, does that make me more competitive than someone that only has 100? And ultimately, it's not the quantity number that matters. It's, we've said this multiple times, it's really just so you can solidify PT as a profession. So having only 100 is sufficient having a variety, you don't have to have it all figured out which setting you wanna be in for PT. That's the whole point of school. They're going to you know, expose you to everything, but having a variety is nice, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to touch every single setting, uh, you know? So kind of to answer the question of like, is a larger variety better, but smaller amounts, that's fine. But also is a lot of observations in one or two settings, that's also fine. Whatever just solidifies that, you know, physical therapy is, is the route for you. Um, just getting exposure to some variety is nice, whether that's uh, across the board or just one or two, you know. Um, but yeah, the number isn't as important as when do you feel like PT is your, your choice, I guess. All right, so um, we have about three minutes left for this session. And I just wanted to thank all of our panelists. Thank you guys for coming, for being here, for sharing your, uh, the information that you have. And also, I know you guys also answered the questions in the live. So thank you guys for that. Um, and then for the students um, who are here, uh, don't forget that there are breakout rooms after this. So I hope you guys can uh, join and talk one-on-one -on -one with um, the schools that you'd like to. Um, and that'll be all for today. Um, just thank you guys a lot for being here. Um, this is the first time we've done this and we hope you guys would join us um, for another year. Thank, thank you. you so much, Sina. Thank you. <laughs>